In this problem, we're going to go through the whole procedure of testing a claim made about the population mean. So this problem states, in a test of the effectiveness of garlic for lowering cholesterol, 64 subjects were treated with raw garlic. Cholesterol levels were measured before and after the treatment. The changes before minus after in their levels of LDL cholesterol have a mean of 0.7 and a standard deviation of 1.98. Use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that with garlic treatment, the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. What do the results suggest about the effectiveness of the garlic treatment? Assume that a simple random sample has been selected, identify the null and alternative hypothesis, test statistic p-value, and state the final conclusion that addresses the original claim. Okay, so first thing that we have to do is go ahead and identify what the original claim is. And then that will help us with the null alternative hypothesis. Well, it says use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that with garlic treatment, the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. So we're trying to test that the mean is greater than zero. The mean change is greater than zero. So let's go ahead and write that out in symbolic form. So we have mu is greater than zero. This is our original claim. Now, what would be true if the original claim was false? Well, that would mean that mu is less than or equal to zero. So now the null hypothesis, remember, always includes equals. So we have mu is equal to zero. And then the alternative hypothesis, take a look at steps one and two. The alternative is the one that does not include the equal to symbol, which would be that greater than sign. So we have mu is greater than zero. So now this also tells us it's a right tail test. Okay. Which means our test statistic is going to be on the right hand side along with our critical value. Okay. So we're going to have, put this in red. This would be our critical value. This is actually a T score. And then this would be our rejection zone. So I want to figure out what this value is, what this critical value is. And then I'll take a look and see if the test statistic is in that rejection region or not. So this is using the critical value method. Okay. So now let's go ahead and open up StackCrunch, input all of our information, and then that will give us the values that we need. Let's go back. Let's actually put in what the null and alternative hypothesis were. Um, looks like answer choice D. Null is mu is equal to zero, and then the alternative is mu is greater than zero. Okay, now it's asking for the test statistic. So let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch. We're going to go to Stat, and this time we're going to go to T Stats. Since we're dealing with the population mean, we go to T Stats using the student T distribution. And what we have here is one sample, and we're given a summary. So let's go ahead and put the sample mean. This was given to us as 0 0.7. Standard deviation, which is 1.98. And then the sample size, it told us 64 subjects were treated. Now we're going to perform a hypothesis test. Our null hypothesis is mu is equal to 0. Alternative is mu is greater than 0. Let's go ahead and put show critical value. Saves us a step from trying to find it, um, going to a different location in StatCrunch. What's our significance level here? 0 0.05, perfect. Click on Compute. Now it gives us our critical t-value, and then also gives us our test statistic. Okay, so our critical t-value, we have 1.67. So our critical value here is 1.67. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our test statistic. Our test statistic 2.83. So let's go ahead, let's put that in real quick, 2.83. Okay, now we can make a decision about the null hypothesis. So 
Let's take a look at where that lies. So 2.83, this is going to be the right to the right of that critical value that we found. So 2.83, let's put that about like right over here. Might not be exactly where it's located, but we know it's in the rejection zone. So that means that we reject the null hypothesis. Now, if we were using the p-value method, let's go ahead and take a look at what our p-value is. So determine the p-value that's given to us right over here, 0 0.003. And now, if we're using the p-value method, we have to compare the p-value with the significance level. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would compare those. So we have a p-value of 0 0.003, and then we have a significance level. Remember, it's denoted by alpha. This is 0 0.05. So 0 0.003, this is less than or equal to 0 0.05. So since the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, the significance level, that also tells us to reject the null hypothesis. So no matter which method we use, we still end up with the same conclusion. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. And now since our original claim did not include equals, Remember, our original claim was that mu was greater than zero, so it does not include the equal to symbol, and we rejected the null hypothesis. That means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So let's go back. Okay, so we reject the null hypothesis, and since the original claim does not include equal to, that means that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean of the population of changes is greater than zero. And let's go ahead and check our result. And we got it correct.